Last time on the history of Spain and Portugal, ancient Iberia was inhabited by various groups of pre-Indo-Europeans, one of which were the Iberians, which is where the peninsula gets its name from. And by around the 6th century BC, they lived alongside various Indo-Europeans and Celtic or Celticized groups of people. The Carthaginians tried to take the peninsula, but Iberia got confiscated by the Romans because of Rome's Carthage isn't allowed to have a nice things policy. Some Romanization and Jesus later, a bunch of people used the opportunity of a weakened Western Roman Empire to invade and settle in Iberia. One of them, the Suevi, even established their own kingdom. In response, the Western Emperor sent the Visigoths to kick them out. And by the 6th century they had conquered almost all of Hispania. Also around this time, a bunch of Britons escaped and settled in Northern Galicia to escape the Anglo-Saxons invading Britain. So there's that I guess. Despite ruling the place, the Visigoths were actually a minority in a majority of Hispano-Romans. Even though both groups were Christian, the Visigoths were Aryan Christians, while everyone else was Nicene and later on Chalcedonian Christian. This isn't a theology video, but I'll give you an oversimplified explanation. Arians were non-Trinitarian and didn't recognize the Pope's authority, while the Nicene and Chalcedonians were the opposite. As you can imagine, this made ruling the peninsula kind of difficult. Though by 587 King Recared I put an end to the tensions by converting to Chalcedonian Christianity, the Visigothic Kingdom produced many prominent theologians and turned out the Visigothic Code, a law code heavily influenced by Roman law. Unlike the previous laws, which differed between Romani and Goti subjects, the Visigothic law didn't distinguish between the two and referred to all subjects as Hispani. This was probably done to create a stronger sense of unity in the kingdom. But in 711, the Visigothic kingdom was invaded and conquered by the Umayyad Caliphate. Though why and how exactly they did it is hard to know, since there are no contemporary Muslim accounts and only one very vague Christian account. What we do know is that around this time the kingdom was stuck in a civil war of sorts between two men who claimed the throne, Roderick and Achilla II. According to one story, Roderick had assaulted the daughter or wife of the Count of Ceuta, who at the time served the Visigoths. So out of revenge, he asked for help to the Caliphate to invade Hispania and kill Roderick. Though this story is often considered nothing more than a legend by modern historians. Another possible explanation to the conquest, which is my favorite because it's kind of funny, is that the Umayyads conquered Iberia, kinda by accident. Basically, what was planned as a simple raid ended with them gaining a foothold in the south, since instead of fighting back, the townspeople kept running away and after killing Roderick at the Battle of Guadalete, from there on out they conquered the rest of the peninsula swiftly. During the conquest, a number of Visigothic nobles fled and settled in the mountainous region of Asturias. There they elected a nobleman by the name of Pelagius, also known as Pelayo, as their leader or princeps. In 718 he established the kingdom of Asturias and fought against the Caliphate at the Battle of Covadonga. In it the Caliphate picked scissors and Asturias picked rock. Rock wins. This victory is often seen and considered the beginning of the reconquest. Despite the loss, the Muslims kept going and finally deposed the last king of the Visigoths in Septimania and took an expedition into the Duchy of Aquitaine, which brought them into conflict with the Franks. It didn't really go well. But at this point they had firmly established themselves in Iberia or as they called it, Al-Andalus. Like most land conquered by the Umayyads, they allowed Christians and Jews to continue to practice their own religion, as long as they paid a tax called a jizya that is. For the Christians, this was obviously a downgrade, but for the Jewish people, it was a pretty good deal, especially compared to how the Byzantines and the rest of Europe tended to treat Jewish people. Meanwhile, Asturias spent most of its early years strengthening and establishing itself by forging alliances with other people who didn't fully submit to Muslim rule. This was basically their training arc. But Aaron Jesus really seemed to have a shine on Asturias, because remember those Amazic people I talked about in the first episode? Well, after the conquest of Northern Africa, many of them had converted to Islam, but still found themselves being treated as second-class citizens by the ruling Arab elites. This is relevant because the majority of the Muslim force that conquered Iberia were Berbers themselves, who despite arguably doing the most fighting, were paid very little and were often assigned the most difficult of tasks. 
like defending the frontiers from hostile Christian kingdoms. Obviously they had enough, and in around 740 the Amazic people in Africa and Iberia revolted. The Berbers in charge of the frontiers abandoned their posts to march south to fight the Arabs. Thanks to this, Asturias took advantage of the abandoned frontiers and managed to expand and conquer all the way to Galicia. As a result of the revolt, the Berbers managed to establish their own dynasties in northern Africa. But in Iberia they were defeated by the Arabs, and one particular Arab family seized the opportunity to basically make Al-Andalus their own de facto independent state. By 747 the Umayyads had become so unpopular that they ended up a bit murdered. They were deposed and replaced by the Abbasid dynasty. The Abbasids though were thorough and made sure to track down and kill any members of the Umayyad family they could find. However, one member of the Umayyads, the young prince Abd al-Rahman, managed to escape the murder fest. He fled to Iberia and with the friends he met along the way, defeated and deposed the Arab family that tried to rule Iberia as their own de facto state. In 756 he had established the Emirate of Cordoba, becoming Abd al-Rahman I. By the mid 8th century the Iberian Peninsula was dominated by the Emirate and the Kingdom of Asturias. Cordoba would lead Iberia to what is by many considered a golden age of science and culture, and Asturias and its successor states would finish their Reconquista and play a major role in shaping up the Spanish identity. Oh and also Portuguese. But I'll talk about these guys in another time.